Ukraine destroys Russia's valuable Black Sea fleet with stunning success. In stark contrast to Ukraine's grinding painful efforts to restrain Russia's march westward in eastern Ukraine, Kyiv is plugging away at Moscow's valuable Black Sea fleet with stunning success. Ukraine's military suggested that three of Russia's vessels, two large landing ships plus a possible hit on a reconnaissance vessel Ukraine has previously targeted, could have been impacted by Ukrainian missile strikes on the Crimean port city of Sevastopol. According to Newsweek, Russia has attempted to fortify its Black Sea bases against Ukrainian drones and missiles. It has wielded decoys to confuse Kyiv's operators, British intelligence assessed last week, and Moscow has announced it will beef up the protection around its fleet with large-caliber machine guns to shoot down incoming naval drones before they strike Russian vessels. But its adaption has been slow, very much to the Black Sea Fleet's detriment, argued Marina Miron, a post-doctoral researcher with the War Studies Department at King's College London. The Black Sea Fleet has only had a limited role in supporting Moscow's invasion of Ukraine and remains the prime vulnerability for Russia's military, she told Newsweek. In the latest of Ukraine's strikes, Kyiv said on Sunday it had attacked two of Russia's large landing ships, the Yamal and the Azov, and a communications hub in Sevastopol, as well as other unspecified infrastructure facilities. Open source intelligence accounts and Russian military bloggers reported that Ukraine had used Western-supplied, air-launched, Storm Shadow and Scalp cruise missiles to strike the Crimean port. In an updated statement, Kyiv's military intelligence agency said it had attacked one of Russia's ship repair plants in Sevastopol, where the Yamal was docked. We can confirm that both landing ships were damaged, said Captain Dmitro Pletenchuk, a spokesperson for Ukraine's navy, according to Ukrainian media. One of them immediately went for repair. A third vessel may have been caught in the weekend's attacks, Pletenchuk said. Kyiv is verifying whether Russia's reconnaissance ship Ivan Kors may have sustained damage last Saturday, Pletenchuk said. The vessel was likely damaged, the spokesperson told. Germany says that Scholz's visit to China prevented Russia's nuclear strike on Ukraine. Western media, including German, reported that in 2022, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz arrived in Beijing and helped convince Chinese leader Xi Jinping to influence Putin not to use nuclear weapons against Ukraine. But Bild publication disagrees with such statements. Earlier, the leader of the SPD faction in the Bundestag, Rolf Mutzenich, said that Ukraine and the rest of Europe should thank Scholz as his visit helped prevent a possible Russian nuclear strike on Ukraine on Putin's orders. However, Bild notes that its columnist Philip Piatov casts doubt on this and recalls that earlier the US media had written that in the autumn of 2022, the US feared a nuclear strike by Russia against Ukraine. China was involved in preventing it. After Olaf Scholz's visit to Beijing, the Chinese authorities called for the non-use of nuclear weapons. As early as 2022, the American media wrote that Scholz's role in Beijing was minimal and that he only passed on information from Washington. In response to Bill's request, the Chancellor's office quoted his words from November 2022 after a meeting with Xi Jinping. In Beijing, I asked President Xi to use his influence on Russia. On one hand, the Americans threatened the Russian Federation. On the other hand, and the Chancellor was involved in this, we managed to get China and India to sign a declaration in which they spoke out against the use of nuclear weapons in general and in Ukraine in particular. Olaf Scholz certainly contributed to the change in China's position. But in any case, Scholz did not prevent a nuclear war, as there were no signs that a nuclear strike was imminent. Military expert Carlo Masala, a professor at the Bundeswehr University in Munich, told Bild, Earlier, it was reported that if the Russian president believes that it is enough for him to just sit out this war and we will weaken our support, then he miscalculated. Also, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz announced the creation of a long-range rocket artillery coalition for Ukraine and the Bundestag reported that Scholz would eventually provide Ukraine with Taurus missiles. The Ukrainian armed forces hit the large landing ship Konstantin Olshi Ukrainian armed forces hit the large landing ship Konstantin Olshinsky with a Neptune missile. Ukrainian Navy spokesperson Dmitro Pletenchuk said this. 
Currently, this ship is not combat capable, Plitinchuk said on national television. He added that a Ukrainian-made Neptune anti-ship missile was used for this, Ukraine, which still controls several hundred kilometers of Black Sea coastline despite Russian occupation of some of its southern regions, does not have any large warships however, it has conducted a series of successful strikes on Russia's Black Sea fleet in recent months using missiles or seaborne drones, there was no immediate comment from Russia. Russia took the Konstantin Olshinsky from Ukraine, along with most of Kiev's navy, when its troops occupied the Crimean Peninsula in 2014. Plitinchuk said, currently, this ship is not combat capable. There was no immediate comment from Russia. Russia took the Konstantin Olshinsky from Ukraine, along with most of Kiev's navy, when its troops occupied the Crimean Peninsula in 2014. For nine years it was dismantled for parts, and a year ago they decided to restore IT. In addition, the Speaker of the Naval Forces of the Ukrainian Armed Forces confirmed the defeat of the ship Ivan Kurs in Crimea. As for the Ivan Kurs, we can confirm the defeat of reconnaissance equipment in the assault part of the ship. That is, in fact, now he is not ready for combat. He cannot carry out the tasks as intended, said Dmitry Plitinchuk.